everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Amber Rose, also known as The Religious Hippie. You can basically follow me on any social media platform or you can go to my official website at thereligioushippie.com. So today we're basically going to be talking about Halloween and the Catholic side of it, Hallowtide, all of that. Um, but first, we have a little special guest. So this is Barry B. Benson. Um, he is a bumblebee who I found outside of my house and I gave him some sugar water to help him but um clearly he's not doing so great I don't know how long he's gonna live I don't know if it's just because he's old or if he stung something but technically bumblebees don't have stingers so bruh so I'm not really sure to be honest um so I gave him some sugar water but he seems to be perking up a lot more now that he's warmer i guess i don't know he's our little co-host for today dude i don't know what you're doing do you want to flip back over there we go when i say that the closest saint to me is saint francis of assisi that's how you know that it's true because out of all my friends they've never met anyone and i've take i've i've asked them this i'm like have you ever met anyone that will literally save bugs and each time they say no i'm the only person they've ever met that saves bugs I don't know why I do it. I couldn't give you an exact formula as to why I have to save bugs. I just do. I don't understand it. Yes, I even save spiders. In fact, there was this jumping spider that kind of made its home in my work area up in the loft over there. And I had him for about a good six months. Jumping spiders live for a very long time. And so he was like eeny weeny when I when he first kind of showed up in my loft. And I just let him hang around because it was winter time. And I'm like, well, you're not hurting anybody. And if anything, he keeps the pesty, like the little fruit flies away. I hate those things. And so um, I just kind of like kept him around. And then in the summertime this year, he got huge. Like he was huge. And so I let him go outside in the summertime, but he was a really cool companion. Kind of miss him low-key. Probably shouldn't have let him go because he's probably dead now, but um, yeah. Enough rambling about bugs, though. Unless those creep you out, then in that case, it would be, like, a great theme. But, I mean, if it doesn't, then, like, I don't know. Bugs never have crept me. Crept? Have never creeped me out. Also, my Religious Hippie mugs are live on my website. If you guys didn't know, these will never be made again, so get them while you can. They're almost sold out. Um, the pink one's personally my favorite. I have affordable rosaries on my website as well that you guys can also get. Definitely go check that out, and without further ado, let's get into the video. I also apologize if you can hear my dad vacuuming in the background. Um, yeah. So throughout my life, coming back into the church and even before then as a child, I have always heard a lot of people's opinions on Halloween. Some people think, oh my gosh, it's the devil's day. Like it's the day the devil rules the world and all this stuff. And then there's the other people who simply just like do not care at all. Like they don't think it's the devil's holiday, but they're also not religious. But then you have those of us who know it's a Catholic holiday and celebrate it like it's a Catholic holiday. I personally love Halloween. I think it gets a bad rap. Um, it's commercialized way too much these days to the point where we really lost the true meaning of Halloween. Kind of like the true meaning of Christmas. But we've really lost the true meaning of Halloween and what it signifies and, and what it stands for. And so hopefully this video will help you guys if you guys are on the fence about it. The word itself, Halloween, comes from All Hallows' Eve, and it marks the first day of Hallowtide for Catholics. Hallowtide consists of Halloween, All Saints' Day, and then All Souls' Day. So the day before we have a big feast or celebration, we usually have something what's called a vigil. This goes all the way back to our Jewish roots. Usually the Sabbath is on Saturday, but they would start it at sundown on Friday. And so what we do is like Easter vigil. So there's a mass and a bit of a celebration before a big feast day, like they start celebrating before the feast day at sundown. So All Hallows' Eve is the vigil to All Saints' Day. These three days of Hallowtide, again, Halloween, All Saints' Day, and All Souls' Day, is really important to us as Catholics. It reminds us to pray for the holy souls in purgatory. It reminds us of the reality of heaven and hell. And also it reminds us of the spiritual side of things, the supernatural, the supernatural side of things, like Satan exists and our angels and guardian angels in purgatory and things of that nature. 
Now, a lot of people see that the dates between Samhain, which was this pagan ritual gross thing back in the day, and All Saints Day kind of like correlated, like they came on the same day. And so that's why a lot of people thought that uh, it was like a pagan ritual, like All Saints Day. But if you actually do research, there is no foundation to support this throughout history. And in fact, the pagans would always blame the Catholic Church that they were... <coughs> Sorry, I just had like a tack there. But the pagans would always blame the Catholic Church that we were taking their holidays when in reality they were taking our holidays. Leave it to pagans to demonize the church. So those two things, completely separate. We get various Halloween traditions from a bunch of different immigrants. For example, dressing up for Halloween, that came from the French. The jack-o'-lanterns came from the Irish, and they originally carved turnips instead of pumpkins. But you know, you get what you get and you don't throw a fit, so. In England, they would go door to door and beg for these soul cakes, promising to pray for the departed loved ones of those who gave them these. Unfortunately, all these customs and traditions ended up going into one big melting pot for modern society to just do with what they pleased. And of course, what did they do? Like with every single holiday, they commercialized it and made money off of it and kind of like demonized the Catholic Church, which is what they always tried to do. Actually, at one point, Puritans in America banned the um they banned easter and christmas because they thought they were pagan holidays so unfortunately halloween has been taken over by secular society we already know that with all the gory movies we have these days with all of the crazy outfits and the demonic weird occult stuff that comes out around this time of year but we can still celebrate and take back Halloween as a Catholic holiday. So here are some ways that you can celebrate Halloween as a Catholic. I'm actually also going to go through just like all of Hallowtide, so Halloween, All Saints Day, and All Souls Day. Um, so starting with Halloween, you can go to church and pray for the Holy Souls in Purgatory. This is huge. We should be going to church every single day during Hallowtide, but All Saints Day really is the only day that's a holy day of obligation. Um, but you should still go, personally. Obviously, you can dress up and go trick-or-treating. If you want to dress up as a saint to make it more Catholic, awesome. I'm my, I don't go trick-or-treating anymore. I'm too old for that. But Chloe is having a Halloween party, and so I'm going as Dorothy. Um, I thought about going as a saint, but the timing's just not working out, and for the life of me, I cannot afford a costume right now. So, um, I already have a Dorothy costume, basically. I mean, it's not exact. It's literally just, like, red shoes and, like, a plaid blue and white dress and I'm like you know what that's close enough we'll just go with that you can do or you can host a trunk or treat those are always really fun at your local parish where basically you do trick-or-treating out of cars um, and the kids go around to cars and like trick-or-treat basically it's really cute I think it's really good for smaller kids I think when they get older real trick-or-treating is probably better but um, when they're younger I think it would be a smart idea to keep an eye on them and you know they not go too crazy and you trust the people that are giving them candy that kind of thing it's up to you though you can do a halloween party in anticipation for all saints day this is something that heather from a catholic mom's life is really good at she always puts videos out about how they do um saint themed or catholic holiday themed parties and i'm just like that is phenomenal i'm so glad she's able to do that and i hope i can do that one day um i just don't really have the facilities for it right now but when i have my own family i definitely hope to do that. The next thing you can do, which a lot of people don't think about actually, I asked a couple people, I'm like, hey, have you ever thought about this? And they're like, what? No. And that's to bless your candy that you're handing out. So many people don't bless the candy they hand out to kids. And I'm just like, you never know. You know, I feel like it would just be smart to do this, especially since we bless almost everything else. Why not bless the candy we hand out? You can also hand out Catholic items with the candy. I think that's really fun, like little prayer cards or something like that. I think that's really cute too. Next, you can carve or paint some holy pumpkins. I know some people have like, um, they have like pumpkin carving competitions where they try to carve Madonna and Child and things like that. I am not the best at that. Um, so as much as I would love to do that, I do not have the artistic abilities, but I still enjoy painting um, on pumpkins. Carving them is a little harder. I just apparently don't have the motor skills for it. And this last one's my favorite, especially for All Hallows' Eve. Whether you are an adult or you are, or you have a child or you are a child, I don't, how old are kids these days? I don't, I don't know. 
I've always enjoyed reading stories of the saints, to be honest, especially the martyrs around Hallow's Eve, because, um, yeah, it's a little spooky, maybe, in some circumstances, especially how some of the martyrs have been killed, but I personally just love reading stories about the martyrs. Sometimes I even throw on like Father Ripperger's podcast while I'm going around and cleaning and stuff like that. For those of you who don't know who Father Ripperger is, he's one of my most favorite priests. He is an exorcist. I think he's in the Diocese of Colorado. I am not sure anymore, but he is phenomenal and he talks about the spiritual side of things and what he's experienced and how to protect yourself from spiritual warfare and how demons work and how angels work. It's just so fascinating to me and so I absolutely love listening to his stuff. Again, if you are queasy about those types of things, maybe don't do that um, because that's just not going to help you spiritually at all. But for me personally, I find it fascinating and it really strengthens my, my prayer life and my spiritual life. So maybe just be diligent if that type of thing freaks you out. But personally, I love it. Okay, All Saints Day. As I mentioned before, it is a holy day of obligation, so get your butt to church. No exception. You can host an All Saints Day party, which again, Heather does an amazing job at making those videos on how you can do that and the treats she does. I absolutely love that. So actually, I'll link that below for you guys or her channel in general. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to find the exact video, but just in general, her channel is really good. Of course, you can always dress up as your favorite saint and then also ask your patron saint's intercession. I have a few. I have St. Ambrose, I have St. Michael, I have St. Rose of Lima, and then I have St. Francis. So um, I'm the closest to St. Francis, obviously, as you guys saw in the beginning of this video, um, but all of them have really helped me a lot. And so, I mean, ask for their intercession, you know, your patron saint intercession, your name saint intercession, somebody you're drawn to, maybe start a novena to one of them. That's really cool. And finally, All Souls Day. Also go to Mass and offer up the communion for the souls in purgatory. You can go visit your loved ones at the graveyard if you haven't seen them in a long time. Um, clean up their graves, bring some flowers, that's usually what I do. I also really like making spooky treats on All Souls Day. I once made these black cupcakes. Um, unfortunately though, I used charcoal in order to dye them black and so I gave like everyone diarrhea was not a fun time, but they tasted good. Anyways, guys, this is my quick little video on Hollow Tide. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Again, it is a Catholic holiday and we do need to reclaim these holidays from secular society who tries to commercialize and demonize the church. And so the best way we can do that is by living our faith out boldly. With all that being said, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Bye.